Hi guys, welcome back. Today we're going to do a betta fish and I'm choosing colors right now. I'm using the CMW system and this is going to make choosing colors very easy even for the most novice. So I got out my Dahlia purple sheets and going through them and we talked about this in the Dahlia purple video. I really like the Dahlia purple and the blues. It just attracted me. So I picked my pencils from this color scheme over here, but I needed to pick some comps from the Polychromos. So while I haven't done the sheet yet because this is the Polychromos books just came out, I was able to easily pick comps. I chose manganese violet as a comp or a pretty close comp to my Dahlia purple. They have the same similar line even though the Dahlia purple is a little bit darker it's okay because the manganese they kind of run in the same family of colors so if you even go darker with this I can get a darker hue that would even more closely match this Dahlia purple has a little bit more red it's it's kind of a combination color between the red violet and the manganese without it being crimson. So it, there is no direct spot on match. So I would go with the red violet and the manganese. As far as the blue comps going, we have Indantharine blue, which is PC247, is a very good um, color match with indigo. The dark indigo on the polychromos is a little bit too dark for a direct match with the Prismacolor Indigo. It's darker. So I'm going to choose these four colors and I'm going to go with the gray. This gray is the one that this gray is the one that I'm going to go with because it did have a nice color match. It was nice and dark. This is probably comparable to 90% and if I look under the 90% on the Dahlia purple chart, cool gray 90 cent, it's almost a direct match. It's the, it is the darkest polychromos besides going right straight to the black. Payne's gray, it's very comparable, very similar, but the cool gray six. Okay, let's begin the instruction. If you don't have the CMW color blending system, I will leave a link for it in the description. Or you could just follow along with us. You can just follow along with us as we go. Today I'm going to do a demo for a subscriber who is working on a picture that has betta fish. And they were having trouble, or they were a little bit nervous about jumping in to do the betta fish because they had never done one and they wanted to see one being done. So I told them I'd give them a little demo of it. And I love doing fish. I've been drawing and coloring fish, I think, since the beginning of time when I first started drawing and coloring years and years and years ago. So this was a, is not a finished piece. This is just what I was doodling on. And here is the one that I'm going to do for you. I got this off of RF123, off their vectors. You do have to pay for it. It's only pennies. So if you like this fish and you print it on good paper, it's a nice fish. <laughs> so let's begin. Okay, we're going to start with the Dahlia Purple, and that's PC1009. Beta fish have lots of spines. So I want to be able to intertwine the colors so that it brings out the different spines that it has. I'm using long tapered strokes, a bottom layer, keeping it long and very wispy. Now I want to be able to put other colors in there so I'm not going to fill it up. And I also want to distinguish the different fins. So here we have a fin, here we have a fin, and here we have a fin. And of course these two. My shadow is going to be in here and under here to have this fish have some sort of depth. So I'm going to keep that in mind. But I'm going to just fill in 
getting color into it. Now while my inspiration picture is not this picture, I'm sort of taking my cues from it on where the colors are. The next color I'm going to use is the uh, blue slate and that's PC 124. And I'm going to start bringing the blues into the top part of the fin in the same way I did with the dye purple. Still just trying to get that first layer on. Now it takes time and patience. No scribbling. Full even strokes. And I'm trying to bring that color in between the purple. I switched back and forth from the colors two times and now I'm starting to get towards my second layer and I'm going to start brightening things up. My next color is going to be the China Blue PC 1100. And I'm going to get that color right in here, but not all the way to the top because I want to keep the top fairly light. As this fills in, I'm going to switch over to my polychromos. And I'm going to do that because they really hold the line better than the Prismacolor. Right now, it's okay for the lines to blend because it's bottom layers. But in another layer or two, I'm going to start working on it, making sure I hold down those lines. to another pencil. This is Polychromos 151 and it's Halo Blue Reddish. And I'm going to put a good point on that.
have an inspiration picture that I showed you. And I'm only following it for guideline purposes. I'm not doing that exact fish because it's actually not the same fish. But I always try to find some sort of inspirational picture that I can keep an eye on, you know, where light lines could be. And you see how this is becoming very feather-like? I'm going to go in with some white. I've left some space open in here to add some white and that'll just keep this lighter see if I had sketched this I wouldn't have these dark lines on the top and this would look really really flowing that's what's unfortunate about coloring books and getting any sort of paper is that life does not have What I do, my edges will always be dark. This will never be completely realistic. I've switched over to the polychromos again, and this is 247. And this is a little darker hue, but along the same lines. Definite distinction between the fins. So we have a fin over here and a fin going along this line, and I'm using um, gray six, cool gray six of the polychromos. This will give it a lot more definition. I used to shy away from the polychromos but I've really gotten a feel for them the more I use them. They take a little bit of getting used to. Now, you can see the shadow coming in over here because this fin is on top of this one. I'm also going to put a body shadow in and that's going to go down here because the body of the fish would shadow there. And it doesn't have to be much. And I'm using such a dark color to shadow because the blues are dark. So I have to find something that's darker. And you notice I'm not using any black. Okay, that's brought it out really nicely. And I'm going to just get this fin. I never use black, at least not at the beginning. I use black later on, but never at the beginning. It's not it's like I don't even know it's there. Because once you use black, you set the example for the whole page and the whole tone of the page will change. Okay, that's good. Now I have to work on right in this area. Now this goes on top of this. So my shadow is on this side, since this fin is on top of that fin. So once I shadow in over here, and it going down. Now I'm going to start bringing in the color of the fish. And I'm going to go back to my Prismacolor, and I'm using... Prismacolor 
Cloud Blue PC 1023. And I'm going to write that down. The body. <laughs> I'm going to do a light layer with the cloud blue for the fish uh, scales. Now, the artist who did this picture pretty much filled in all of this. I don't want to lose that scale or I have to draw it in myself. And I would, but why waste all that good drawing? that the illustrator did. So I'm just doing light. I haven't done any circular strokes on the picture as of yet. Because this type of fish, I don't want a heavy blend on. And I want to keep the white from the paper with white on top of it. And then I want it heavily lined. pick up my indigo blue and that's PC 901 and I'm gonna get the very top and the very bottom so that the fish looks like it's curving remember when we did um, the way the direction of the light your highlight would be right in the middle because you look at the fish and the fish is a tube so if you put the light line up here or the light in here, it would look like the fish was bending. And maybe you want that if you want to make it to look like it's swimming into the distance. But my fish is kind of going that way, so it's a tube. And I don't want it too heavy. Very light. This is the first time I'm doing sort of like a circular motion but it's extremely light barely touching the pencil to the page okay and then I'm going to do the same thing on the top okay and now as the fish curves in as the body is starting to take on a shape I'm going to darken up right at this edge too so that it looks like the fish is like fat, nice and chubby. It's a definite distinction between the body and the fins and that's what a beta looks like. I really should have done this on good paper pretty fish okay now I'm gonna get out my cloud blue again now all the while I'm keeping my sheet so I will have a record of the colors that I used and the order that I kept them in and here is my cloud blue again, and I'm going to just fill in the face of the fish. Just giving it some light color. And then we'll shape its body. This is why I love fish. Being able to shape it so that it looks like something. And I'm going to go back to my indigo. 
and I'm going to get right underneath that face. and over the top. So I'm giving it a rounded appearance. Adding in and blending it up with some cloud blue. And then I'm going to fill in another layer of white blending going down the fish. Get that nice and blended. Now there is a distinction between the head and the body. There is a distinction between the head and body and I'm going to put a slight shadow going right there very light, barely noticeable. And that just gives it a little bit of, you know, its own separate area. And then blend it up with my cloud blue so that it's only a shadow and it doesn't look like it's a marking on the fish. Just like that. Now I'm going to continue with my shadow color because underneath the fish would be completely shadowed. So I'm going to put a shadow going up and down over here. very lightly, not trying to get any hard strokes on the paper. But if you do, just use your eraser. And I'll show you on the inspiration picture, if I could find it again. On the inspiration picture, you can see the shadow in the same spot. You can see the dark darkening under there and we're going to go in dark over here that's where i'm picking up these shadows from the inspiration picture so we're going to get right in here and we're going to just change the shape of the shadow ever so slightly to match a little bit closer to the inspiration photo and then it gets really dark under here and then on the inspiration picture it gets very dark underneath the face of the fish this would be more of a cast shadow that I'm wor working on than a shade Remember, there's difference between shades and shadows. And then we're going to darken up around the eyes a bit. And right under the gill. got it there. Now on the inspiration picture it's very different as far as the fin body goes but I would like to add in a little bit more blue and white right there. I wasn't really using my inspiration picture on these fins I was kind of winging it myself. But that's okay because no two fish in the world are the same.
Now, between these two fins, let me get out. I need to darken this up because the one fin is on top of the other one. And in the inspiration picture, you can even barely see the second fin. So let's just darken that second one up a bit. getting towards my last layers and all I did I worked on it for about five minutes just brightening up everything with the same pencils that were underneath it now I'm gonna go with my blue slate and I'm gonna just brighten up the color on the body of the fish this is the only other color I really didn't go back to And this will make the cloud blue look a little bit brighter and give that sleek line that often goes down the middle of a fish. I don't have too much in the way of tooth left because I'm using computer paper. <laughs> Very good. I'm going to get out my Posca. I think I'm going to give a little shine on those scales. And I'm going to just lightly tap, ever so lightly, some of these upper scales just to give it a little bit of a shine. So after all, the fish is wet, or it's dead. And then I'm going to brighten up some of these lines, too. You know, you always want to blend in your Posca. It drives me crazy when people don't do it and they leave these Pasca lines. I mean, I used to do that too until I stopped. practice with the Posca you can do a tapered stroke now if you have a line that you don't like you just go in and get rid of it now I'm just doing finishing touches here and there And I think I will call it. What do you guys think? Does it look like a fish? <laughs> 